Hi, and thanks for watching the End Time Revival broadcast with Pastor Harold Smith. I'm your announcer, Jason Connors. The broadcast is recorded every Sunday morning at the Mark's First United Pentecostal Church, located on Academy Drive in Mark's, Mississippi. You can join the church for services every Sunday and Wednesday, or you can view past services at www.freegospelradio.com. This broadcast is made possible by the generosity of its viewers. You can help keep the broadcast going by sending your donation to Pastor Harold Smith, P.O. Box 373, Marks, Mississippi, 38646. Help us spread the word by mailing in your donation. And now, the End Time Revival broadcast with Pastor Harold Smith.
of your soul and uh, that word adversary if you look it up it means the enemy it means hostile it means the devil it means a foe F-O-E and so we've been talking about more than your body we've been dealing the last few Sundays seemed like with with our soul you know uh, the devil he doesn't care if you go into hell in good health he doesn't care as long as you go there. That's it. Come on. Amen. amen. Neither does he shun trying to afflict you, your body, all that God will allow him to. The scripture says in 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, and uh, as I got into this, this just uh, began to envelop me. Peter says here, be sober. The Bible said they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But he said, be sober. Be vigilant. During the war, any time during wartime, they have what they call centuries. And those centuries are placed at strategic points that they can keep a watch while the rest of the army rests and sleeps. And if a century were to go to sleep, while he was on duty, he would be court-martialed and shot. That's how serious that it was to be a century. And, and so Peter says here that uh, we need to be sober. We need to be vigilant. We need to be on the lookout for a predator because he said your adversary your enemy your foe woo, walketh about now I want you to I want you to notice that word walketh about I want to get back to that in a little bit uh, everybody say walketh about Everybody say the devil keeps on walking. He don't rest. He don't rest. Day or night. He keeps on walking. Amen. And if you slow down, you're going to get in trouble. He said the, the devil, 
as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It's his job to devour your soul. Because you see, your soul is something, uh, hallelujah, Woo! I said your soul is something that is the breath of God. That's the reason that a man's body may die and go back to the dust. Uh, amen. But there's something inside there that is the breath of God and it will never die. It will never die. It will never die. Amen. It's going to live on. So regardless of this body, we've got to understand that we've got to protect our soul. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. When you miss church, you're not protecting your soul. When you miss church with no excuse, Hallelujah. And and Matthew wrote, Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost strong here. I feel God speaking to some people's heart this morning. I hope God speaks to your soul this morning. And and say, I, I've got to have my soul right with God. In this body, it doesn't matter so much, but the soul that's on the inside, somewhere when you breathe your last breath, that soul that's on the inside. Amen. It's going to take its flight either to heaven to be at rest with the angels or to be in torment in hell for as long as there's a God. Amen. That's it. Ooh. No in between. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. I don't care what the world teaches. Amen. The devil's teaching a lie today that uh, there's a place called limbo. That you're not even in hell or in heaven, but you're just somewhere in between. And then they charge the family and the loved ones, they charge them so much money to pray you out of limbo on into heaven. And uh, amen, but that's not so. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Bible said as a tree falls, so shall it lie. Amen. However your soul Whatever condition it's in when you breathe your last breath, that's how you're going to be judged of God. Ain't no use to pray no more. That's it, amen. Hallelujah. That's the way I, I used to, uh, way back yonder when I was evangelizing, I'd go to the post office and, uh, and, and I'd, I'd, I'd start praying when I'd get in my car and I'd say, Oh God, let somebody have sent me an let somebody send me an offering today. You know how evangelists do it. They always pray it when they go to the post office and some pastors do. Amen. But uh, I got to thinking about that one day and I said, uh, well, you know, that's kind of a, a hopeless prayer to pray. You know, uh, I should have prayed that this last week because what's already in there is already in there. The mail's already up, and, and they ain't used praying for it now. It's either in there or it ain't. And that's the way a lot of folks do. You know, they pray uh, after the fact. Uh, but we need to pray now that God will enlighten our eyes. Do you know that I spend almost as much time praying Amen. For folks that I know that are good people, but they've uh, allowed Satan to close their eyes to the truth, uh, and they're blinded today. They walk in darkness, and they don't know they're in darkness. Uh, I spend nearly as much time praying for them as I do the folks that are sick and, and need help other ways. Come on, Pastor. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible said we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wickedness in high places. We're fighting today the adversary. Woo, hallelujah. I said we're fighting the adversary of our soul today. Thank God, but I'm glad Jesus' word said greater. Everybody say greater. Yeah. 
Everybody say greater. greater. Come on, I can't hear you good. Greater. greater is he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Come on, brother. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 6, uh, the Lord said, Who shall I send? Uh, amen. And he spoke up, the man spoke up, and said, Here I am. Here I am. Send me. God help us today to get some folks uh, that'll get some get up about their soul uh, and say, God, I'm in a position to witness the people. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's praise him. here this morning. Hallelujah. I appreciate Sandy bringing these fine, fine people to be in service with us. Everybody you come in contact with is a candidate to come to church. Amen. Amen. But so many times you don't ask them. You don't take the time to ask them. Hallelujah to God. But you better be, you better be on the lookout because your adversary is walking about today as a roaring lion seeking to devour your soul. That's it, amen. Come on, Pastor. And I like what Matthew says. He said, you know, we fear the wrong things. Some people fear not having no money. I got over that fear a long time ago. Uh, some folks uh, fear about their job all the time. Some folks uh, fear growing old. And, and you better not ask them how old they are and, uh, or how much they weigh. But those kind of fears don't bother me. All I fear is the dark. <laughs> Boogers. <laughs> and, uh, but everybody's got a fear. Everybody's got some kind of fear. But Jesus tells us in His Word, in Matthew, the 10th chapter, uh, the Lord said, Fear not! Everybody say, Fear not! Fear not! Them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Oh, I like that. Hallelujah to God. You don't have to worry. Amen. The devil may destroy this body. But one writer, I believe it was Job, says, Though this body be destroyed and the skin worms eat it, he said, He said, Yet in my flesh will I see God. Yeah. Woo! You ought to be shouting all over the place, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! He said, don't fear him that can destroy the body but has no control over your soul. But he said, fear him. Woo, hallelujah. Everybody say, fear him. Fear him. Fear God and keep his commandments. He said, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's it. Come on. Hallelujah. It's amazing how one man can cause so much havoc. David, in his way, he wanted to, uh, he decided he wanted to number Israel. And God had already said in 1 Chronicles, the 27th chapter, uh, for not number, not number his people, that God would make them to be as the sand of the sea. You know, it looks like sometimes we can just let things alone what God tells us. Amen. But David decided that he would number the people. And the Bible said that uh, God's angel, God's avenging angel, stood up and in one day killed 70,000 men because of one man counting the people of God. I'm telling you, the adversary of your soul is out to destroy you today. Yes, yes. Hallelujah to God. I said he's out to destroy you. But greater, greater 
is He. Greater is He that's in us. Thank God. I'm glad if He's in you, you've got everything that you need. You've got a built-in storehouse. Thank God you've got access to heaven and earth. You've got access to healing. You've got access to blessing. You've got access to the power and the grace and the mercy of God. Fingers go up, so I'm gonna keep preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, how many of you feel this moving here? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Do you hear? I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Oh, listen to me. Woo! We're favored of God to feel His presence here. Do you hear what I'm saying? We're favored of God to feel His presence. Not ever. When they go to church today, is going to be able to feel what you and I are privileged to feel. Amen. They're going to leave and they're going to come out of that church. They're going to go in and come out just like they are. God called Solomon. And you know, it's amazing. I got to hurry with this, but I got to give it to you. It was amazing. But God appeared. Everybody say, God appeared. God appeared. Now, God didn't appear to everybody. No, it didn't. But God appeared to Solomon twice. That's it, amen. Come on. Yes. Twice. And he said, He said, Solomon, if you will walk before me, come on, that's it. I'll establish your kingdom forever. But when Solomon was young and humble, yeah. listen to what he said in 1 Kings, the third chapter. He said, Now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king. And he said, I am but a little child. That wonderful Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Solomon said, I'm just a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. Listen here how he prayed. Give thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. See, he was asking God all the right things. Lord, I need wisdom to judge your people. That's it, come on. Give me an understanding heart. God gave him a, his request. But God said, walk in my ways and keep my commandments. But let's look at Solomon. Eight chapters later. But King Solomon loved many strange women. And by strange there, he meant they wasn't strange looking. But they was idolatrous. They worshipped idols. They was pagans. They was heathens. And in his old age, these strange women turned his heart from being perfect before God. I think what he had 600 wives and 300 concubines. That was enough to turn him. But in his old age, in his old age, he began to let these wives build high places, altars, churches as it were. Yes, sir, come on. Right there in Jerusalem. And Solomon, 
himself worshipped Ashtoreth, Come on. the goddess of the Sidonians, Milcom, the goddess of the Amorites, Come on. Chemosh, the god of the Moabs, Moabites, and Molech. You know, that's the one that they would put in the fire, sacrifice him. He even worshipped that God. His adversary, the devil, sought his soul. And the Bible said because of this, God told him, said, I'm, I'm taking the kingdom away from you. Come on, Pastor. And, and you know I've got to bring this in. Oh, uh, woo! God is a loyal God. Woo! If He promised you something 20 years ago, He's still going to keep that promise. I said God is loyal. Hallelujah. He told David, He said, I'm going to establish your kingdom forever. And He told Solomon, He said, I'm, I'm going to take the kingdom away from it. But not in your lifetime, amen, because of my servant David. Uh, and he said, I'm going to give ten tribes uh, to Jeroboam. Uh, and I'm going to give one tribe to your son. Amen. And he spoke to Jeroboam. And he, he said, uh, Jeroboam, if you'll walk before me. That's it. Come on. If you'll follow after me with on. your heart. Your heart. He said, I'll establish <laughs> your kingdom forever. Woo, hallelujah. Come on. But Jeroboam became wicked. Jeroboam was afraid. Now this was a man that God spoke to you. You know, you need to remember some promises that God made to you today. You need to, you need to quit drifting. You know, they sing a song. Are you drifting too far from the shore? You need to quit drifting and get back to the promises of God. Because everything that God ever promised you, He's going to bring it to pass. Oh, let's praise Him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jeroboam said, I'm afraid. Now that Rehoboam's over there in Jerusalem, I'm afraid that the people will want to go over there to worship God. And they'll, they'll take, they'll go over there to worship and they'll leave me and they'll kill me. You see, he forgot God's promise. He forgot what God said to him. And the Bible said he made two golden calves and put one in Dan and one in Beersheba. And he said, it's too much for you to go up to worship God all the way to Jerusalem. You know, the devil's trying to talk you out of worship. Your adversary, if he can get you to sit there quiet every Sunday morning, he's got you. You better listen to me. He's got you bound. Hallelujah. There's some of you that have sat through this service this morning, and you've been bound. You've been bound. You've not got loose. The Holy Ghost is all over this place. Hallelujah. 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 But God saw Jeroboam down there. And I've got to close this morning just a little. You know, the Bible never did even call this man's name. Just called him man of God. Man of God. That's it. Everybody say man of God. Man of God. That was just, that's all it called him. And he said, uh, in 1 Kings 13, in 1, he said, Behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. Bethel was about 12 miles north of Jerusalem. 
And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And so you know the story how that the man of God cried out against the altar. Jeroboam put forth his hand to harm him and his hand withered up. And he said, pray for my hand. And the man of God prayed for him and God restored him. And he told this man of God, he said, oh, he said, come home with me. I want to reward you. I want to reward you. Come home with me. I want you to notice now, this, this man of God had instructions from God. He said, I want you to go down there. I want you to get the job done. Everybody say, get her done. Everybody say, get her done. I want you to go down there and I want you to get her done. Crying against his altar. Don't tarry down there. Don't even come back the same way you went. Woo! Get out of there. Woo! Oh, Rabbi Hasha. You know, that's what the Lord spoke to the church almost 2,000 years ago. He said, I want you to go down there in that world. I got a job for you to do. I want you to get her done and then get out of there. Hallelujah. Come on. So he said, I can't. King, I, if you give me half your house, I can't. So he started back. And there was an old prophet that the that had a lying spirit in his mouth. That's it. And he on, came, sir. but I'm going to tell you where this man of God's downfall was. It wasn't just going home with this prophet and eating. No, that wasn't his damn first downfall. His first downfall was he stopped and sat down under a tree when God said, don't tear him. Get out of there. Get out of there. We got folks today that's in the church you better hear me this morning that you've stopped. Amen. And you're sitting under a tree today, rifted. You better get up from there and you better get her done and get out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Thank you. But sitting under that tree, that was his downfall. Would you stay up? It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter's sleeping. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate is struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know. Sunday's coming. Urashana Makaya. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter's denying. But they don't know. Friday's coming. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robed him in a scarlet robe. They crowned him with thorns. But they don't know. Woo! Sunday's coming. Come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said Sunday's coming. Yes, hallelujah. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood is dripping. His body stumbling. His spirit burden. But wait. It's Friday. And Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world is winning. People are sinning. Evil is grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. 
Then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what's happened to their king. The Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross. Feeling forsaken by his father. Left alone and died. But it's only Friday. And Sunday's coming. Thank God I'm glad for the resurrection. It may seem like Friday to you today. But Sunday's coming. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Sunday's coming. Some of you may feel like you have the weight of the world on you today. You may feel like you're going through trials that you can't hardly stay. But it's just Friday. Sunday's coming. Sunday. Sunday's coming. Ever head bowed this morning? I just feel like there's several people in this altar that needs to be in this altar that you've been going through some things that you feel like no nobody knows about only you and God but I want you to know this is just Friday and Sunday's coming I want everybody in this building that will let's gather around this altar this come on let's gather around this altar it's just Friday Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. 